Are we live? We're live. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. This is Twist Gaming, where you get to play board games with us. Gosh, do the fingers. <laughs> all right, so thank you all for joining us. This is our honest review section of our Spotlight stream, and this week we have done Approaching Dawn, The Witching Hour by WizKids. If you haven't had a chance to watch us play through the game and you're watching on VOD, go check out that other one first, because we had a lot of fun playing it. Did uh, the rules, the, the gameplay itself, and all of that jazz. Uh, but first, who are we? I'm Matt. I'm Anne. I'm Josh. And I'm the disembodied voice of TP controlling the computer. And we would like to point out that this stream and all of this week's streams are sponsored by Approaching Dawn the Witching Hour by WizKids, as well as Catacombs <laughs> Conquest by Elzra Games. So, big shout out to both of our sponsors for this week. So, if you are unfamiliar with our Honest Review section, we like to talk about the game we just did our playthrough of, go through what we liked about the game, what wasn't our favorite, possibly, and then how we would improve that if given the opportunity. Because constructive criticism is best criticism, right? We want to point out that for our review sections, uh, we've had some concerns that our review sessions are not very in-depth or that we do not have a lot of experience playing a game. This is our opinion based on playing through a game a couple of times. So, it's an initial review. Yes. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a first a, impression. It's a not an in-depth digging in and trying to find every single flaw in the game. This is our first impressions of the game. Granted, this is my second time playing it, and but generally it's our, sec our, our first impressions of the game. So first up, uh, well, generally what we like to do is uh, the winner of the game doing the initial what you liked about it, but since this is cooperative and we all lost... But uh, you've lost you the lost most, the so most. you should be first. You're the one that lost the game for us. I lost the least. I'd like to point that out to all of you. Okay, so I'm going to talk I think about... I we had the same level of corruption. 12. Yeah. Fantastic. I had 12 also. So what, we, what I liked about the game, and I am going to try to not step on some of the toes, because I have a feeling I know what y'all are going to talk about just a little bit. Um, this is a big selling point for that Ken is pushing on this game that I absolutely agree with and love is the fact that it is a cooperative game that doesn't lend itself to one alpha gamer hijacking the game from everyone else. Yeah. Is, the rules specifically state in one section that you're not allowed to talk strategy with other people, which... In a certain part of the game. In a certain section of the game, correct. It's not like you can't strategize, but there's a lot of independent choices to make. You have your secret objectives on your characters as well. That lends itself to that uh, partially. So I think that's a great way to mitigate some of the pitfalls of a standard uh, cooperative game. Yeah. Uh, at the same time... I love the difficulty of it because I feel like a lot of cooperative games can be on the easier side of things. And I feel like this game is difficult to the point where I don't think it's unbeatable by any means. And I don't think that it's unfun by the fact that it's so hard to beat. I, I have a good time getting to that stage we of failure. We lost by the skin of our teeth. We did. We were going into the the that. second half of the second to last year. We, we were all set up fine besides the level of corruption. That, that was the yeah. only issue we had. If, like The cards on the table wasn't... So, so the, how the game ends is either someone has over 20 corruption... Correct. Or we lose all the cards on the table. Over 20 corruption at a specific yeah. stage of the game. Yeah. This right. is important. And we had enough white magic set up that we could have basically nuked any of the problems. So we could have gone white magic heavy at the end, mm -hmm. cured our corruption. Mm -hmm. We would have been a-okay. Yeah. It's just we lost by two. Yep. Two corruption, essentially. Two corruption. Um, so that's, that's definitely something to think about there. The game has a lot of stuff in it as well. Uh, there's... A lot of cards. There's a lot of different demons. Cards, there's a lot of cardboard. There's a lot of... Like, the there's box everything. is... The box you could use as a weapon, and it is just the because... The box is a standard size. It's, it's a standard size box. It is so dense. You were mentioning that, but even before the stream... Josh made a point of saying, uh, I think there's something else in this box. I'm like, what do you mean by that? He's like, this doesn't, this doesn't feel... It doesn't feel like a game box. It feels too heavy. <laughs> And it's not a bad thing. That means everything that's in the game is just a really high quality. They didn't chintz on the, I'm going to use really lightweight cardboard here. I'm going to use light card stock. I'm going to use... Look at the quick reference Stop. guides. Stop! The quick reference guides, the scenes, are all these these card, the card stock. Yeah. And then all the character sheets are... Super thick. Thick art, not 
yeah. keep her. I want to make a point off camera. I know that I'm not really part of the game. No, go for it. But from a production level, I think it's super impressive because, you know, uh, publishers don't include things that aren't necessary. And if they're doing things that are higher quality, it's, it's just for the value of the game. It's just for the experience and the quality. Um, and so not only do they, you know, have these thick card stock, but just every piece of it is so necessary. And to, like, pack it all in there means that you're really getting a value for the price. Absolutely. And something I'd like to point out here, Ken, your engineering is showing. Um, <laughs> the, a lot of the tokens in the game are multi-use. And that lends itself to you don't have 8 million different tokens that serve a one-time use thing that you never have to worry about again. You're super confused about, like, what the hell does this mean? Does that mean? Uh, for keeping track of your secrets, you use a corruption cube. Uh, for keeping track of your plus one on your deck, it's the same token if you flip it over to mark that you already used your ability. And it's also your marker for another thing. And I thought that that's a, a really good concept, okay. just being efficient with the use of the game components so you're not just overloading it with essentially useless things yeah. because you're making sure everything has multi-purpose, multi-facets to it. So that's some of the things I really enjoyed about the game. I, I don't want to you know, blow V8 on and on about it. So, Anne, how about you? I've got a lot to say, so I'm going to let Josh go first, and I'll pick up the points that uh, he doesn't pick up. All right. So, all the cards on the table, I think we have about half of them. Maybe there's... Seriously? Oh, yeah, there's a lot more spell cards. It specifically says to take out, based on the amount of players that's in the game. So, we played with the minimum amount of spell cards there. Oh. I mean, think about it, too. If you have more characters, we actually the really... The plays up to six? Yeah. We never really got damaged by our monsters, by no. our demons. We did a, a... I think that might have been our a biggest undoing in it, is that we put a little bit too much weight in having them not do any damage to us when we could have dealt with it. Yeah, that's... Jeez. These are all the cards that... We didn't play with. We didn't play with. Yeah. So that's... Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of different spells, so it's pretty cool. Like, there's actually a little stack of cards I missed to pick up. But like, there's a ton of stuff in here, and each deck's kind of built randomly, so each game you're going to have different spells, different things happening. So we got through a lot of the six cards, which I, I don't know if that's really standard in a game. No. We, we barely got through any of them when I played with Ken the first time around, just yeah. because they're such a high cost, and you generally don't unlock them until a little bit later on. Where six corruption is a lot. Where beginning of the game, six corruption, oh, that's fine. Exactly. So we, we bought a lot of that, which was interesting. Um, like, I got those really cool familiar. I kind of wish we saw some more fey familiars because his yeah. ability was really cool. Yeah. Sadly, there wasn't any that came up. Uh, I got a monster. Yeah, you got a monster. There's a lot of cool little things and there's just a lot of... I don't know the word I want to use. Customization. There's still a lot of little nooks and crannies to, to really... Strategy-wise, you could really delve Details? into. It's not the word, exact word I want. But there's a lot of little things that you have to kind of be like, right, I need to focus on this, this, and this. And it's not... I just have to focus on myself. I just have to focus on... Helping my friends helping and not my friends. hurting my friends too much. Too much. Yeah. Which apparently I hurt my friends a little too much. But I was... Like, my thing was, if I had cleared all my enemies... Yes. Everything in front of me. My, my secret was to have nothing at the end of my turn. So you were purposely trying to nuke your enemies every round. Yes. Was... So if you didn't mess up that one turn, it might have. You might not have had to do it the next time around. So that way, maybe I wouldn't yeah. die. Maybe it's, you know. It's... It, it, it is what it is. I, I might have kept them. Be like, all right, you get four because I could have kept it and be like, oh, I'm going to put eight freaking white magic in there, which is a big boon. It's a huge boon. So so I was really working my secret to be like. This is going to help later on in the game. Right. So I'm going to be able to bring all those light, white magic. And I had this guy putting two white magic in at the beginning of the game. Um, yeah, that early game, that card was fun. Yeah, this card was good. Uh, I miss Snickers. Is, is it adorable? <laughs> it's Lucy. It's Lucy. Uh, I, I really like the familiar thing. That, that was really yeah. cool. We, ne we didn't use it to sacrifice them at all. Yeah, that's another thing that we didn't do at all. That's... Uh... Um, something to keep in note. So we there's a couple of options for strategy that we didn't even really delve into. It, it offers you a lot of different ways to accomplish the same tasks, so that yeah. way you're not pigeonholed into a decision. And I, I really enjoy that. Um, 
but it's a lot of fun. I, I, I there's a lot of different scenes, and I, I was kind of sad that we lost because I want to play again. Like, like I know that's a question we're gonna ask later, but like, like so I'm ready to play another game. The disappointing thing is we actually have to return this copy. What? Uh, no. Yeah, this is no, no, no. Uh, Gen Con copy. He needs it back like in the mail tomorrow. Well, that means we can steal it back at Gen Con, right? We'll, we'll get mean, a real copy at Gen Con. Then. That's true. Uh, so, anything else from you, Josh? Um, there was an interesting point. I don't know what the rules say. I was down to seven cards. And I oh, could have I could have burned more cards. I mean, I'm assuming you just don't. Draw yeah, anymore. I just get, I, I just kind of get stuck. It would have been an interesting thing. So I, I really burned all my low cards now. Yeah. Um, which makes it interesting uh, mechanic wise to see how that would have worked. Um, but yeah, there's a stack of secrets. I'm interested what to see the other ones are. Now that I understand the other secret better now the 20 right. corruption thing and, that makes and sense. there's easy hard and normal secrets like yes. difficulty wise which is also pretty interesting so you could tailor the game to be harder or easier based upon your who you're playing with whether it's experienced rookies or if you just want a, a higher challenge or you want to be a little bit more relaxed and play oh so i didn't even read this so secrets are supposed to be set up you put two hard two medium and two easy in there yeah so the six cards and then you shuffle them out I, we still had an even distribution because yeah. Anne had a hard... It sucked. Yeah, that one yeah. did suck. I mean, not it, it, sucked it sucked to have it. <laughs> it sucked to have it, and it sucked to have it for the first time playing a game. Yeah. Um, Any I other... Thought, I thought there was something else I read earlier, but I guess not. Um, I really like the board. I like yeah. the little clock. That's a, it's just a cool little thing. It's, it's such a nice little touch. Um... And I don't know what the this section Barrow? of the board is, for, but this is I think this is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, that might be, that's for different game variants. Yeah, uh, interesting what the two player variant is. That that might be cool. Mm-hmm. And I like this. This is a campaign. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's meant to be played as a story. Essentially, yeah, so basically, each... it starts with All Hallows Eve. It goes into Winter Book Club. So it, it takes over a year, and then you go the Spring uh, Revival. Revival. Uh, then the rituals of summer, rites of summer, rites of summer. Sorry, Halloween, and then Halloween, and then all the small things. This is the, the promo. promo. That's so cool. And, and then, then there's the, actually a training mission as well that we didn't play through. Oh, I like the little look at the the blackboard. Yeah, it's it's Mr. S- <laughs> it's uh, Mr. Snickers. Nope. No, Mr. Patterson. Mr. Patterson. There we go. Mr. Patterson teaching them about. Monsters. Yeah. So, Josh, anything else? Um, I think that's it for now. I, I can't think of anything else. Okay. And how about yourself? I I really like this game. I really like this game. I am. I love RPGs because I. The point for me, the appeal for me for playing games is to kind of break away from reality for a little bit and go to a different world. So I like games that have really in-depth stories because it helps me to immerse myself in the story. So I love the fact that Ken is, you know, very focused on making his story and I can relate to the character and I can play in the story. Absolute, right off the bat, favorite thing about this game. Mm -hmm. Uh, Representation. Uh, we talked a little bit with Ken at the end of a previous video talking about his efforts to provide more representation for females in the game. This game has a ton of women in it, represented in it. If not all women. There's two, two males. Two guys. And, and there's one, two, Neither of them one, are witches. Two, three, four, five, six, and six what's girls, cool is two guys. The girls aren't scantily clad they're not overly sexualized. Now, he talks about the fact that the women are supposed to be very feminine, and that's a tribute to Wicca, and he's done a little bit of research about that. So there's a purpose behind why they are feminine, but they look like people. They look like normal people, which is yeah. so even, nice. That's what Nicole looks like when she gets out of the shower. So, so, so they even have, like, a... She's a little bit of a bigger girl. <laughs> <laughs> Right <laughs> Matt, Matt, that's your. She's gonna kill me. Uh, and that's your, that's your uh, armpit. My hair, armpit hairs, uh, yes. Springing the life. Yep, that's right. Okay, I feel better. 
I, I think it's amazing. He's doing a lot of things to promote representation of women in the gaming industry, and I think that's awesome. We have uh, an Asian character. We have an African American character. We have a girl with green hair. I mean, it's it's really cool to see all different kinds of people in the game. I like that. The sky has a poster of, of this, this girl, girl in the in background. Yeah, it's super cute and nerdy. I love it. I uh, yeah. What's the name of the book on there? Jabberwonky. It says wonky though, and not wonky. <laughs> Uh, I love the humor throughout the game. I love the kind of snark and the sarcasm. I, it, the game was funny, and if you can make me laugh in a game, then I'm really enjoying it. I love the strategy of the game. There is a lot going on that I have to keep in mind. The game, when, I, when you're first explaining the directions, it's incredibly overwhelming. But it's very true. The first couple of rounds, I was like, oh, all right, I got this. I get this. I understand how these mechanics are made. Mm -hmm. And what was really great about it is uh, another thing that I talk about, which you should probably talk about your thing as well, uh, I have ADD. One of the things, one of the symptoms of ADD is short-term memory, poor short-term memory. There's something for me to remember everything. I do not have to spend the time trying to remember, oh, I now draw an extra card this time, or, you know, these are the sigils that are open. Oh my God, I love this. But this, this token really was, was what made me really happen. Look, I've got the universal token to remind me I've already used that power. I've got the plus one token on the other side. Hey, this turn, I get to draw an extra card. I don't have to think about it. It's there. I warned Ken when we were talking about this game at dinner um, at Dicericon. I was like, if you have a re quick reference guide, Anne's already going to give it a good review. Ah! Like, you got one on your cover, you've got a quick reference guide, like, you're good. Good you're artwork. You, yeah, like, the the artwork, artwork is just good. like the end the game. Seriously, I love this game. Um, the artwork is gorgeous, but that goes back to, like, the women in the... Usually when you see women in a game, they are, um, they're, like, scantily dressed or overly sexualized. They're pretty girls because, whatever, everybody likes a nice aesthetic on a game, but they're... They're girl. Like, put that one on the camera. She's got she's thighs. I mean, she's there. I, she's I'm gonna got put her upside down just because otherwise I won't be able to fit her. Unfortunately, unless TP can turn the camera upside down for me. Uh, can't you pick the camera two set two inches and slide uh, underneath? Yeah, I guess I could do oh, that. Oh God, look at you. <laughs> Think it outside the box, man. I mean, they could so, see her also so right there. In the I also I played picture. the gamer girl. Uh, this is something I want to mention. Yeah. The, so everyone, every character has their own starting deck. Yeah. So look at look at mine. This is the white. Look at the white magic name for that. Fine co-op mode. <laughs> <laughs> so and then uh, the black magic one is minion bind. So, but but th this one this one has flavor on both sides. Uh, min maxed. <laughs> and uh, meta gaming. Ah, yeah. oh, that's cute. That's funny. So there's a bunch of little flavor throughout the game. Oh, the flavor text on the cards are absolutely great. The Josh card is absolutely my favorite. Yeah. It's, it was... I, we need... You're right. We need royalties. <laughs> but it's so nice with all the various kinds of tokens and reminders and chips that I don't this have is, to think about something. Once per game, heal... Yeah, that I was going to play as that character also as my What background. is it? Can you... At once per game, you may heal 10 corruption from any character. So that's a nice. It's it's like the medic role, essentially. Yeah. Um, I want to touch on one of the more controversial aspects that I kind of brought up with Ken. I am I can I am a Christian, and I grew up in church, kind of in. My mother was a pastor's assistant, so I was kind of on that side of the church, which is such a weird thing to say. Um, but I've seen very extreme Christians, I've seen very lax Christians, I've seen, I've seen the gambit, and I have my own personal beliefs. So, Ken is also a devout Christian, and we talked a little bit about how we thought the theme of this game was going to appeal to the mainstream. And I loved the fact that what he said was, hey, you know, I'm, I'm not going to make a game that um, crosses over my own personal ethos. Uh, I did want to make a game. It's going to the game involves Wicca. It's a tribute to Wicca, but it's not an immersion. So I can see a, some parents uh, looking at this game and being like, "You're talking." There's there's always going to be the Christian parents who are like, "The game's talking about magic. I want nothing. Magic witches and demons. I want absolutely nothing to do yeah. with it." You're always going to have that. But I feel like <laughs> for my personal beliefs and where I fit on the spectrum. 
that the game is, and what Ken said, it's not immersive. I'm not sitting here learning spells. I'm casting spells, but the spells are a bunch of, they're, they're, they're a bunch of made-up names, and it's a bunch of made-up funny demons. Min-maxed. Yeah. Okay, co-op mode. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you're not, so yes, it is magic, yes, it is, you know, magic demons and witches, but uh, it's not immersive. I don't think any immersive. of the demons are like... Real demons. They're all just like... There's no Beazel Bubs, so I think... There's like right. three serious demons that we saw, too. The rest were like... The rage demon looked like he got really upset at the line at the DMV. I'm I pretty think... sure that's the example <laughs> Ken used when we were talking. I feel like the second that you whip out a board and there's a pentagram on it, there's a stigma, especially among the Christian community. Possibly. I, I, I don't know that, so I, I, that's understandable, though. So, so I just... I really want... To, it's not a Ouija board. There's, I feel like that the pentagrams get associated with seances, get associated with Ouija boards, and I don't want this game to get passed over because somebody looks at the boards. Everybody's got their personal beliefs. It doesn't make you comfortable. It doesn't make you comfortable. Nobody's here to judge, but I want to tell you, hey, yeah, there is a pentagram on the board, but the game may not be as serious as when you take the game board once look over. I feel like that's important for my community. I would like to step back. I know you were talking about the artwork and all of that it's fine gorgeous. stuff. gorgeous. So I was in charge of the rules this evening. The rule book is gorgeous. The rule book is big. It's a big rule book, and I mean like big as in... Pages? It's, it's not that it's filled with a bunch of small text writing. They put in these big, beautiful diagrams of everything. Oh, that light's great. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, so big beautiful diagrams on everything and they have examples of what happens in specific uh, parts of the game so how to play it out it's really detailed with numbers and letters and everything's you it, there's no confusion there and then on top of that too there's like on basically every other page if not closer to every page there's uh flavor text stories yeah, I was reading through. So what it's you were it's through. stories regarding the characters and the situations that they're in, and it gives you just a little bit more depth and backstory and a backbone to the game. For character Since development and character, personality. Considering it is a campaign, it's meant to be played campaign wise too. But it's also just really cool because there's so much extra detail that's been put into the game itself, and I enjoy that. I, I thought it was great. I do want to mention the quick reference guides again. Again. They're hard card stock. They're big. They were. They explained things to me. Stupid proof. I had an icon reference on the back because we weren't playing with you know six players. I was able to have two, so I could have both sides up at the same time. And this is actually how I figured out that my secret was a hard secret. You know, I'm not, I don't want to comment on the gameplay itself because I haven't played, but just on the uh, the reference guide. I think it's amazing because I hate it when people want to fit a reference guide onto something the size of a standard card, and then they cram all this text on there, and it's like, I'm not going to it's read It's information this. overload. Yeah. And there are people who have, um, have issues. There's a specific name for it, and I apologize. I can't remember the name of it off the bat, but if they look at something that has too much text, it just all blanks. You can't. They can't you process it. Exactly. Uh, it's, so it's... it's you need to make sure that you you know there's a balance between the information you're trying to put in a space and you know how much text you're, how much you're shoving onto that space. Okay. So the most important question. Well, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. So uh, next up is what wasn't your favorite part of the game? What didn't you really care for? Uh, what would like, how would you have changed it if that's the case? So. This is actually really difficult. I enjoy a lot of the aspects of the game. Um, I'm going to delve in and nitpick just a little bit here. I would have liked if there was... There's multiple ways to do almost everything in the game. The one thing that I saw that I didn't necessarily think was available through multiple avenues was opening up the sigils for other people. Yeah. And you had a lot of corruption at one point, and the only option that I felt that I had was to play a black magic card on you that would have opened up more of your sigils so that way you were in a better position so more demons could have come and eaten your corruption so that way we wouldn't have lost that way. My secret was that I had to open up all of Josh's sigils and mm -hmm. I got very frustrated the first round when you two had met the requirements for your secret and I had not. And I'm sitting here looking at the cards and you can tell with the sigils 
and it's very difficult to try and get, well, of course, I grab, I happen to grab three cards, and it's the one that gives me three, but it's very difficult to match it up. You gotta play multiple cards to open up the sigils, and you sometimes you're playing duplicate sigils. And that's that's a big part of the uh, the deck building aspect of it is to make sure that you have all of the sigils represented in your deck. Yeah. Surprisingly, though, I do want to point out that even though I got frustrated the first round, I had two avenues within the game where I had with one card could open up all the sigils, and that was uh, my familiar, and mm -hmm. I had one card that specifically opened up all the sigils. So. I see what you're saying. I don't mean to cut you off on it, mm -hmm. but having had that secret, I didn't find it as hard as I thought I was going to find it the first round. Okay. Um, this is all I could open. I could not open up that other sigil. I, did, I didn't have that sigil card. I could open up five sigils and that's it. And most of that was because of my metagaming card. Okay. That, that was the only... It allowed me to open up four sigils. Other thing else I had was a single sigil, sigil that mostly matched that card. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of where I wish that that was coming from. Uh, even something that would allow you to open up a sigil of your own, possibly. I don't know. It's Choice just, to your own? That's, that's kind of my only real concern there. Because we wanted to fight demons. We were like, oh, we don't... It's not like we wanted them just, like, to hang out. And just well, like, we no, needed no. them to get rid of our corruption yeah. that we were getting. So... I'll th I might think of something else later on, but let me pass it over to you, though, because that was my biggest gripe that I saw. Uh, from the game itself. So, Anne, how about yourself? I would look, so my biggest gripe, and, I, and I, it gets, I guess it gets to net picking, is um, back to the theme of the game. I feel like I really love this game, but off of the bat, I need to consider in my personal life who would feel comfortable playing this game and who would not feel comfortable playing this game. And I think that it's the theme that would make those people feel uncomfortable with the game. And that sucks because it's a really awesome game at its, at its core. So I don't mind it, but I immediately know that in my personal life, and I guess it could be with other games too, that people run into the same thing that, hey, I can play this game with all these people, but I know that if I bring this game around these people, you got to be selective of the crew you're playing. And especially like after dark things, which have become more popular. That's true. Yeah, it's, like, a, it's in the same vein. Certain... These games are going to offend these people. This game's going to offend that people. I mean, it's just the territory when it comes to. I guess because I have in my own life people who are more more people who are sensitive to this particular kind of thing that that hits me more it's a little more hypersensitive yeah, to yeah that I, that, I, that I feel that way like speaking from a, a, a non-religious person um, I don't have many people who I, this I think would offend them yeah I'm, I'm like, in the same boat. I would have thought that maybe it would offend you like but you are closest to that kind of category to me that I have in my life so it really just depends on who it is yeah yeah so Not to negate what you're playing. No, and that's why I think it's kind of nitpicky. That's why I feel like my commentary is nitpicky. Like, you're not going to appease everybody. But if I had to pick a thing, that would be the thing that I would... Think. I, I, love, I love this game. So. Uh, my biggest... Oh! Oh. All these smelly, stinky, allergic cats. Where are my puppy dogs? Yeah. <laughs> That's, there we go. There's your thing. There's my thing. I want more pup dogs. Witches don't have puppy dogs. They have cats. They're all crazy cat ladies. Alright, it's fine. I'll give you that. Uh, where's the one in the robe? That's why I have Lucy. Hmm? The one in the robe. Ooh, She's yeah. got cute demon puppies. That's why I have Lucy. And Megan. Maybe... <laughs> She's got cute little demon babies. They're demons, but they're not doggies. This guy, oh, this Jack's guy a demon. Like a and yeah, he does kind of look like a dog. And your dog is a demon. Yeah, yeah, him is. Yeah, him yeah. is. Him is. Him is big demon. This is a puppy. So, Josh, how about you? Um, I don't want to really say this is a negative because they did a really good job with the colorblind friendliness. Mm -hmm. The biggest issue is with the sigils. They did put the singles there, the signs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you covered them up with a little token, and then I can't see what the sigil is, and I don't remember what they are so you're like oh the shape and i'm just like yeah that doesn't help me because everything's covered up right now if they put these out grayed out here uh, so you can kind of see oh that's, that's, that's smart would have fixed that issue and would it but otherwise 
color, like everything was fine. Like this was workable. So how this works is when you put the little thing on top, if you put that in the camera. So yeah, as when your uh, your sigils are closed, you have a little marker on top of it. And, and you can see you, the color around it. When you move, uh, I'm going to move that one because that's the green yeah. one. Uh, this is the orange here. So when it's on top, you, you don't see the color. I mean, you see the color and that's it. Uh, when you move it across, obviously that's not the problem. But when you're telling someone which sigils to open... That's something that you have to take into account. Somebody can't tell yeah. the difference. And between. all of those sigils do have a name. They are named in the book. I kind of wish now that they were written on the card, so that way it would be easier to reference to someone who is colorblind. Yeah. Just because I know with you, you started saying sigil one, three, yeah. six. Yeah. And I think if they just had it duplicated on the other side and like darked out a gray. A grayed out on the grayed out. Because the color didn't matter. It's just what the symbol is, and you're like, oh, the star, the coffin the moon, whatever you want to call them. Yeah. Um, would have made that a little bit easier. That that was... But that was, like, the biggest thing. Like, otherwise, the colors weren't an issue. Like, they use symbols for everything. Each each witch has their own unique symbol. Yep. For some reason, she, she has the steering wheel. I don't know why. Uh, he... I, I, I know. I he remember... The story. Oh, God. I remember he specifically said it was something else, but it's not supposed to have that dot in the middle. That makes it look like a steering wheel. He, I remember. <laughs> yeah, I remember he specifically said something, and now it's going to drive me crazy. Um, what, where, what are we talking the about? The symbol in the top right. Left, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it looks like a steering wheel. <laughs> um, so that, that was just my minor little nitpick. Was that was the good thing is they're all in the same position on the cards. Yeah. So like when I was telling you, I was just like, all right, line these all up. Which spot am I missing? Yeah. Uh, which made it easy enough to do it, but I, I mean, that's me really being nitpicky. Like, as a colorblind gamer, that was the biggest noise I had. Otherwise, I, I really enjoyed the game. I mean, it does co-op a little bit differently. Yeah. Um, where you're being mean to each other it, kind it, of like yeah it's like normally like we're all working toward a common cause well it's everything you do to help yourself hurts your your teammates yes. so it's a matter of balancing out so you and we can't all just... have our own board we're not we're not fighting one single board together yeah, we all have right. our own board we all have our personal demons to deal with yeah so it, it makes it really interesting how that that works um so it's a just a little different kind of thing and it's not to be nitpicky there's just some people who don't like co-ops and this is a lot different than your typical co-op typical co-op like pandemic i think or matt else. made a good point earlier when you were saying that sometimes co-ops seem not challenging enough and this was cha that this kept the same kind of uh challenge yeah that you get from playing without it feeling overbearing yeah because again we lost by two points at the like almost the last turn I mean, you lost the game for us by two points. If we're going to be so, about. getting town down to brass tacks. Uh, most important question of the evening: Would you play it again? So, Matt, would you play it again? Absolutely, I would play it again. <laughs> Ridiculous. Welcome to the Matt and Matt show. Uh, no, I I really enjoy this game. I love campaign games. I like co-op games a lot. This gets away from the pitfalls that I have with a lot of the co-op games that I've played before, and there's. It's a very polished game. It's very yes. polished. And uh, I, I enjoyed nearly every aspect of it. So two thumbs up for me. I would definitely play it again. How about you, Anne? I will be leaving the stream, hopping on Facebook, messaging Ken, and asking him where my autographed Gen Con copy is. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll take that as a... Yes. yes. And hopefully Ken will be like, it's for you to pick up. Yes! Um, yes, I... I can we play after this? That, that that is my question. I need to go to bed. No, you don't need sleep. Yes, I need but to I sleep. If <laughs> if I didn't have work tomorrow, then I would go grab a cup of coffee and we'd be playing. Even the knowing next that we have to give this back tomorrow, you're really gonna you're really just gonna walk. I, I wish that I, I. I wish we ended with a win. Yeah, I wish we ended with a win, and that just it. It's not that I, I like want bad to taste tell more mouth. stories. Like regard, like I, I want to end with a win because I want to go to. I feel like it's the same thing with a video game where you're the kind of a completionist. Yeah. And, and you want to do everything before you go to the next level. Like that's how I feel about this game. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so I think that's it. Unless you guys had anything else to say. Um, maybe we'll speak one of our next campaign games. 
because it is a it is I, campaign ooh, game. Ooh, Maybe. Possibly. We'll, we'll see. Idea. We'll have to open that conversation in a later date. But otherwise, so thank you all for joining us this evening. And this was our honest review section of our spotlight of Approaching Dawn, the Witching Hour by WizKids. Thank you all for joining us. If you hadn't had a chance to go and watch our uh, earlier spotlight of the game, I suggest you do so. It was a lot of fun. Uh, we lost, but we still had a lot of fun. Yeah. And almost lost it a few times, too. That's, that's always a good thing. So thank you all for joining us. We would like to point out also that this stream and all of this week's streams are sponsored by Approaching Dawn, The Witching Hour by WizKids, as well as Elsewhere Games with Catacombs Conquests. Which we'll be doing next week. Which will be, we, we will be playing next week on our next Spotlight stream on Wednesday. Yep. So soft sign off now before we get into our whole, whole spiel. Thank you all for joining us this evening. I'm Matt. I'm Anne. I'm Josh. And I'm the disembodied voice of TP giving my opinion when they weren't asked. <laughs> would you play the game again? I would play the game for the first time, yes. Yay! <laughs> Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.